August 11th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapters 21 and 22 from the Old Testament. Then Job answered, Listen carefully to my words, let this be the consolation you offer me. Bear with me and I will speak, and after I have spoken you may mock. Is my complaint against a man? If so, why should I not be impatient? Look at me and be appalled, put your hands over your mouth. For when I think about this, I am terrified and my body fills a shudder. Why do the wicked go on living, grow old, even increase in power? Their children are firmly established in their presence, their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe and without fear and no rod of punishment from God is upon them. Their bulls breed without fail, their cows calve and do not miscarry. They allow their children to run like a flock, their little ones dance about. They sing to the accompaniment of tambourine and harp and make merry to the sound of the flute. They live out their years in prosperity and go down to the grave in peace. So they say to God, turn away from us. We do not want to know your ways. Who is the Almighty that we should serve him? What would we gain if we were to pray to him? But their prosperity is not their own doing. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How often is the lamp of the wicked extinguished, and how often does their misfortune come upon them? How often does God apportion pain to them in his anger? How often are they like straw before the wind and like chaff swept away by our whirlwind? You may say God stores up a man's punishment for his children. Instead, let him repay the man himself so that he may know it. Let his own eyes see his destruction. Let him drink of the anger of the Almighty. For what is his interest in his home after his death, when the number of his months have been broken off? Can anyone teach God knowledge since he judges those that are on high? One man dies in his full vigor, completely secure and prosperous, his body well nourished and the marrow of his bones moist. And another man dies in bitterness of soul, never having tasted anything good. Together they lie down in the dust and worms cover over them both. Yes, I know what you are thinking, the schemes by which you would wrong me. For you say, where now is the nobleman's house, and where are the tents in which the wicked lived? Have you never questioned those who travel the roads? Do you not recognize their accounts? That the evil man is spared from the day of his misfortune, that he is delivered from the day of God's wrath. No one denounces his conduct to his face, no one repays him for what he has done. And when he is carried to the tombs and watch is kept over the funeral mound, the clouds of the torrent valley are sweet to him. Behind him everybody follows in procession, and before him goes a countless throng. So how can you console me with your futile words? Nothing is left of your answers but deception. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered, Is it to God that a strong man is of benefit? Is it to him that even a wise man is profitable? Is it of any special benefit to the Almighty that you should be righteous? Or is it any gain to him that you make your ways blameless? Is it because of your piety that he rebukes you and goes to judgment with you? Is not your wickedness great, and is there no end to your iniquity? For you took pledges from your brothers for no reason, and you stripped the clothing from the naked. You gave the weary no water to drink, and from the hungry you withheld food. Although you were a powerful man owning land, an honored man living on it, you sent widows away empty-handed in the arms of the orphans you crushed. That is why snares surround you and why sudden fear terrifies you, why it is so dark you cannot see, why a flood of water covers you. Is not God on high in heaven? And see the lofty stars, how high they are? But you have said, what does God know? Does he judge through such deep darkness? Thick clouds are a veil for him, so he does not see us, as he goes back and forth in the vault of heaven. Will you keep to the old path that evil men have walked, men who are carried off before their time when the flood was poured out on their foundations? They were saying to God, Turn away from us, and what can the Almighty do to us? But it was he who filled their houses with good things, yet the counsel of the wicked was far from me. The righteous see their destruction 
and rejoice. The innocent mock them scornfully, saying, Surely our enemies are destroyed, and fire consumes their wealth. Reconcile yourself with God, and be at peace with Him. In this way, your prosperity will be good. Accept instruction from His mouth, and store up His words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. If you remove wicked behavior far from your tent, and throw your gold in the dust, your gold of Ophir, among the rocks and the ravines, then the Almighty Himself will be your gold and the choicest silver for you. Surely then you will delight yourself in the Almighty and will lift up your face toward God. You will pray to Him and He will hear you and you will fulfill your vows to Him. Whatever you decide on a matter, it will be established for you and light will shine on your ways. When people are brought low and you say, lift them up, then he will save the downcast. He will deliver even someone who is not innocent, who will escape through the cleanness of your hands. God, as, as Job is explaining to his, his so-called friends about how things aren't always as they appear, which couldn't be more true about this story, about his delusional friends and what is really going on. And even Job's kind of in the dark about what has actually happened. When he's talking about how it, how all of the people who are wicked seem to go on and have great lives. They have big houses, um, they have wealth, they have positions, they have uh, carefree children. They have all these things that belie any sort of destruction or consequences or discipline by you in his statement simply being but if the wicked can go on living this uh, amazing life and God's not punishing them then how do you know he's punishing me for being wicked you can't say that but in reading that I think a lot about how how I think about people we never truly know anybody uh, I think sometimes we barely know ourselves but even if we're married to a person for pretty much our whole life, we'll truly never completely know them. And I think we make a lot of rash decisions about people's lives because we're human. I'm not saying it's right, it's just because we're human. I remember, uh, gosh, this had to be about 10 years ago, I was incredibly jealous of a friend of mine because she had a relationship and she had a relationship with this great guy and she was my friend so I didn't know him as well and she was horrid to him she would talk not very nice to him she would belittle him emasculate him in front of other people and I was so frustrated with that process because I couldn't understand how she got such a great guy who seemed to adore her and dote on her and take care of her and her kids. And, and yet here's me who would never do that to a guy and I'm single. And, and there's all these other things obviously that you and I've dealt with God, but that was my, my illusion. Well, if she has all this stuff, then this must be how it is. And sadly come to find out later on that he wasn't a nice guy, at least behind the behind closed doors and my friend lived in terror a lot of times and I had no idea because of how our perception is from the outside same thing with day in and day out lives our perception when somebody cuts us off in traffic is I can't believe you just did that to me probably using some gestures and some not so nice words, but we have no idea why they just cut us off. Our natural reaction is to take it personally because it's all about us. Whereas they may have just got a phone call from school and they're racing to get their child from a situation. Um, they, their wife's in labor, I don't know. There could be a trillion reasons why they just cut you off. It could be because they're a bad driver too, but honestly, they don't know you, so why are we taking it personal? And even though that's not directly what Job is talking about, I think it's a good lesson for everybody to stop and realize that making assumptions based upon an outward appearance from people isn't always accurate. I'm always a little bit 
Okay, a lot. Humored. When people think that they know me or know my life. And I'm actually a very private person. People listening to these videos wouldn't know, but part of my testimony, part of glorifying God is to be transparent about my life in these videos. And so, of course, I'm going to be obedient to that. But I'm a very private person. And God, I know you know that. But it's always amazing to me, God, that that people come up with conclusions for my life. That I have this amazing, perfect life. That I can do no wrong. Um, that I have the best of everything. That, oh, I don't know. The list goes on and on. I've heard all sorts of things about who I supposedly am and supposedly what I do. And, um, and even the opposite is true as well. Um, that I'm cruel and vindictive and mean and... I don't know, a whole list of things. And it's so funny because neither of them is true. But God, I think the conclusions we jump to really show our hearts. That if we look into somebody's life, it is a reflection of kind of where we're at. If we look at somebody and we think their life is perfect, we haven't stopped to realize that that other person is just a human being. We've actually put them on a pedestal where they definitely don't belong. I... <laughs> You know, God, I don't belong on any pedestal at all. And if we're in the reverse way, we're, we're being mean and cruel to somebody who we don't know, even somebody we do know, but in this case, somebody we don't know, then that's a reflection of our heart as well. And we can definitely see that in this particular story about Job and his friends, that what his friends are reflecting are definitely true caricatures of their heart of what is happening inside of them god i just pray that i could choose to not have filters when i look at people in their lives that everything in my life that has gotten me to this moment all of the things that have happened to me with me because of me said to me things i saw things i experienced all of those things brought me to this point of who I am now and there's good filters in there and there's bad filters in there now and God I just ask when I come upon a situation um, perhaps a new situation or a person or things happening to me that I won't put my filters on them that first and foremost I would put their thoughts ahead of mine what their needs are ahead of mine, just like we read yesterday in the New Testament in Philippians, that I would think of them as better than myself, first and foremost. And second, that I would never assume to understand what their world is, to always have compassion towards them in realizing that if they are coming out and saying mean, cruel things to me, <sighs> God, allow me to have compassion for them, that their heart is in such a bad place that that actually makes sense to them to talk about somebody they don't know. And the same thing true for people who think I have this perfect life. I don't want them to think that, God, because I, I don't. The things I do have, I, I hope I'm really clear that they're all because of you. They're nothing that I did. In fact, what I deserve is nothing even close to what you've given me. But if they're seeing this perfect life, then I'm not being transparent enough in my testimony that my life is not perfect. And I need to work on that. And I need to show them that because it's only through my weakness that your glory, that your strength is going to shine through. And I get really excited about that. So God, Job is right. That sometimes things seem really unfair, either for good reasons or bad reasons, but they seem really unfair. But ultimately, you are in charge. You are sovereign over everything. You are in control of everything. And you will always want what is best for us in any situation. Now, we may not understand why... The so-called bad people of this world seem to have everything. Maybe we should look at what everything actually means to us in our own personal dictionary. Um, but looking upon those people that seem to do everything against your word, yet they seem to have all these things of the world. Maybe that is their consequence already. Maybe that's 
your judgment on them already that they have all these things of the world yet sadly they don't have what you've given me which is this amazing peace and joy in my heart that I can't explain to anybody else the knowledge that I have been freed from all my sins the fact that I have received eternal life and I get to spend eternity with you yeah sometimes it might be hard to look at people who always have money to pay their bills and a seemingly endless array of relationships and marriages and cars and trips around the world but I wouldn't trade any of those worldly things none of them God for what you've given me now so allow our hearts to be true when we're looking at situations that it doesn't matter if it looks just or unjust to us instead our hearts should should see everything through the filter of the fact that we serve a God who is sovereign we serve a God who is just we serve a God who will take care of all of these things in your son's name I pray amen